Hello, welcome to another tutorial. It is how to make kind of a photo into a moving photo. Um, so it's called Parallax. So I have this picture here that I'm gonna open in GIMP. So it's just a random picture of a woman um, on the beach, I guess. That I found on Pixabay, as usual. We're gonna have to separate her from the background. So you can use this, which is the foreground select tool. Oh, by the way, did you notice my GIMP was no in English? I hope you're happy, everyone. It was very hard I had to do into the settings. Whoa. Um, but yeah, yeah, I looked into it. It was quite easy. Um, so first you have to select roughly the shape of the person, and then you can select mm -hmm. with well, one or multiple lines. Try to get all of the textures kind of all of the places and all of the texture that textures that are on the person and if you select it well it will usually work quite beautifully so I hope it will work I actually just discovered this tool not long ago it's quite nice I think so then you do select and it will select it isn't that beautiful honestly there aren't that many mistakes the first thing I'm gonna do is select remove holes because there might be a few so that's the first thing so first i'm gonna duplicate this layer and then i'm gonna add a mask from the selection add and now you can see if i hide the background there's only the woman but there are some mistakes like here some things are not good so i'm just gonna take my paintbrush tool make it a bit bigger <laughs> and then i'll go here and i'll select what is the wrong so if it's the outside part, you want it to be black, and if it's the inside, you want it to be white. So I will start by removing everything that's on the outside that shouldn't be here, like this little thing here. And all of these will be in black, since I already have the black, that's what I start decided to start with. A few things here. And a little bit here. And I think we are good. So then I'm gonna change my color to white. And I will invert the selection. Shit. Uh, I just realized Crinky is on my other screen. I'm gonna try to make that work better. Okay. So Crinky is now here. I'm not sure it's the same as usual. I had to reset it to make it change screen sadly. And so it's not the same shape as... Like I had to delete the screen the shape I always have but well so now I can change this part with white so I will color here so you can't really see what's changing but if I go here you'll see that now it's in there I think this method is still way faster than selecting it all yourself by the way you could do this with photoscoping but same you wouldn't be as precise I think so this is a pretty nice method I think I will now remove the selection. And I can see there's a little problem here, so I will make it somewhat better. I don't know why that happened, that's very weird. Okay, I think that's good enough. So now that she's selected, we need to do something with the background as well. So you could do nothing, honestly, that could work. But since she has a hat, if I make her bigger, I will show you actually, if I make her bigger, like, it could not fit well, um, because we could see the hat, so I'm gonna change the background a little bit. I will hide my first layer. I don't rem... Well, not my first, my the one that we just made, I will hide it. I will go back on the first one, and I will actually duplicate it again. And here I'm gonna use a plugin that I downloaded. And I had the worst time installing it, so... I think it's my computer, because I have a lot of issues with plugins on GIMP. Uh, if anybody knows how to fix them, I'd love help, because like... I can't find anything online. Like, I try everything and nothing works, so it's quite sad. But I managed to make it work, somehow, weirdly. So it's re resynthesized, and usually you should have it in, like, enhance, I think, but mine doesn't appear here, so I have to use the one in map, and then it's here. But here, it works weirdly. It's the hard one to use, and so I'm using this one but with a weird method i'm not sure it's how you're supposed to do it but yeah so i'm gonna move my lady a tiny bit on the second layer to the right 
and just yes yeah, it doesn't overlap so it's good for resynthesize to work you do have to make a section so i will go here and change uh, do mask to selection and now i have my lady here selected perfectly i will make it a bit bigger so i will go in select grow and grow but by five that's good for me then i'll go back on my first layer open resynthesize take my second layer that we just copied and moved and say okay and now it will calculate what to put in that hole here but like that's not how it's supposed to work it's supposed to just work without doing this so yeah but hey it's pretty good honestly like it's not that bad if i remove the section well you can say there's a problem kind of but it really will not be a problem for us so now i can show my lady again and we have a full picture so we're gonna export these two layers so we're gonna export two layers export as and the first one will be girl underscore background not in jpeg because you want the transparency well you don't really want it for this one but yeah png is good and then the second one same export as and then it will be no background So now if I take them from here, yeah, I have issues with my thumbnails as well. So many issues on here. And I don't want to switch my profile, it's nice as it is. And you have the background and you have the girl. So I can take my background, put it on the first track, then the girl on top. And now it's time for the animation, because that's why we wanted to do this in the first place. So you're gonna add a transform effect to the bottom layer, go to the last keyframe, add a keyframe, don't do anything, go back to the first one and change the zoom to 110. And we're basically gonna do the opposite with the top, so transform. There's already a keyframe at the beginning, add one at the end and change the zoom to 110. So one is moving in and the other is moving out, kinda. And now if we watch it... So it might not be the best image for the job, because there's something quite close in the foreground. But if it were further, I think it would work better, like a mountain or something. But that's the only image I could find that somehow fit, you know. So yeah, that's how you can make a parallax effect with GIMP and Canon Live. I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe. More stuff coming soon, kinda. I'm gonna try. My sewing machine is, is broken, so I don't sew anymore right now. It's really sad. And I'm gonna try to record multiple tutorials um, in the next few weeks. Bye!